Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec. Uh, I just wanted to start this video off by saying thank you to all those people out there who are supporting me in this channel. Uh, it actually really means a lot to me that you find these tutorials helpful. Uh, another thing, I'm also curious how you guys are finding my channel. So if you would, just leave a quick comment below and just uh, let me know how you found me, whether it was through YouTube search or maybe through Twitter, wh whatever it may be, just let me know. So in this video, we're going to be going over the uh, optimization options for SQL map. Uh, I don't have any specific demos for this video. Uh, and it, it's actually going to be a pretty short video because uh, these are kind of basic options, not really a lot to show with them. I just wanted to go through each one and explain what it's used for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with it. So I'm just going to start off by just showing the list of optimization options that we do have. And like I said, there, there's not many options under this category. Uh, so we'll, we'll actually be going through these uh, pretty quickly, I guess, at least a lot shorter than uh, most of the other videos that I do. So you can see we start out here with the TAC O. Uh, we've got predict output, keep alive, uh, null connection, and threads. So I'm just going to uh, start at the top of the list and we'll just work our way uh, down through each of these. So let's go to the first one here, the TAC O. So this one is uh, just an alias which runs these three other switches. So if, you, uh, if you're running SQL Map and you do a TAC O, it's actually going to run the Keep Alive, the Null Connection, and the Threads uh, at the same time. So since this, that's basically all this TAC O option does, and then as we go through this, then I'll cover what each of these other these other switches do. So the next one that we will go to here is the Keep Alive option. So this option tells SQL Map to use persistent HTTP or HTTPS connections. So what this means basically is, uh, just say for example, you load a website up in a browser. So what happens is the browser is going to establish a TCP connection. And actually, I'm going to go to the next slide here because I, I just created a quick graphic here that you could look at. So uh, just say when the when the website's loading, your the browser makes a request maybe for a particular image that's on that page. A TCP connection gets established. Then the HTTP request goes uh, to the web server for that resource. Once that resource has been downloaded to your computer, then the TCP connection would be closed at that point. And the browser will keep doing these TCP connections for each resource uh, that it needs to get for that uh, page. With a persistent connection, the browser will make uh, one TCP connection and then multiple T uh, HTTP requests can be sent over that one TCP connection. And that uh, will save you resources on the server side. So it will save maybe if you're running a server that has uh, a lower amount of RAM in it or, uh, it, you know, it could save you CPU resources. Uh, so, so that's kind of the thinking behind using persistent connections just to save resources on the server. So that TCP connection will stay open until either the client or the server closes the connection. Now, if you wanted to, you could pull it up in Wireshark uh, and do a packet capture and look at the traffic, uh, you know, submit a request with SQL map without this switch and with a switch. And you'll notice that when you use the Keep Alive switch, that there will be a header set in the HTTP response for uh, for Keep Alive, basically SQL maps saying, I want to keep this one TCP connection open. One thing to note about the Keep Alive switch is that it is not compatible with the proxy switch. So you cannot use those two together. So just keep that in mind. And then we will move on to the, uh, to the next option here. 
So the next one that we look at is the null connection. So when you're performing tests for SQL injection, uh, particularly with blind SQL injection, there are different techniques that you can use to manipulate the responses that are received from the web server. So with this null connection switch, it's telling SQL map to use null connection techniques with either the uh, range or the head HTTP headers. And uh, injection vulnerabilities can be discovered then by looking at the size differences in the responses that you receive for the content length header. And, you know, you can look at this, uh, if you wanted to with this one, you could uh, maybe fire up Burp Suite and have SQL Map running through Burp. And you can look at the requests and responses going back and forth. And you can pick out uh, those size differences with the content length. It's, it's basically kind of a way to infer uh, injection uh, attacks. All right, so the next one that we will look at is the threads switch. So this switch works with any of the brute force switches that are available with SQL map, as well as using blind SQL injection techniques. So for example, when you use it with uh, the blind SQL injection techniques, a, a single thread is used to calculate the length of the output. And then once SQL map has that value, it actually starts the multi-threading process then. So each thread that is generated is going to retrieve one character of the query output. So the multi-threading is actually referencing the number of concurrent HTTP requests that are being sent by SQL map. So if you use this switch, you can set the maximum number of requests to 10, uh, any more than that really, and you may start running into performance issues with whatever your target site is. So always keep that in mind. And, and again, that's why these are falling under the optimization category. And then the uh, last one that's under this category is the predict output switch. And this switch is used for inference based blind SQL injection attacks. So with this kind of attack, you can in infer or deduct information about the backend DBMS by sending specific queries to the target. And this would work off of true or false results that you get back. So inference attacks are used when you're when there's no data being returned to you. So you know you know that there is a, a possible SQL injection vulnerability in the site, but when you try maybe some of your injection strings, you're not seeing anything come back, no error messages, uh, anything that would specifically indicate, but but something's just not looking right to you. So that's when you can start using inference based. And SQL map will build tables based on uh, the there's pre-configured output. So if you went under user, share, uh, the SQL map text, and then common outputs, you can look through this and you can see how SQL map is using this predict uh, this prediction. And based on the responses that it's getting back, then it can try to fingerprint what type of database it is you're going against. And then at that point, it would begin to try to extract data from the database. So as SQL map discovers more and more information, then the process actually speeds up, giving you a, a significant performance boost to do blind SQL injection. Because you know, if you've ever tried to do it manually, uh, it, it takes you a lot of time. Uh, and a, a lot of different requests need to be sent back and forth. So especially using a tool like SQL map, automating that process for you will make your life a whole lot easier. And that's actually going to do it for this video, guys. You know, I know I said it was going to be kind of a short video, and, and, and I know this one was probably a death by PowerPoint video uh, since I didn't have any specific demos to show. There really wasn't a lot to show uh, for these options. I just wanted to kind of briefly go through each of these and uh, explain how they were used. Um, I still hope that you found the video useful and, you know, just add it to the rest of the SQL map series just as a reference for you to go back to if you need it. Uh, I will be continuing the SQL map series. Uh, the next ones that I'm going to be looking at will be the 
uh, I believe it's the injection options. So from there, we'll be talking about things like uh, the, the tamper scripts, which I know some of you have requested. So we'll take a look at those. And as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching the videos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And as always, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.